What's up, guys? This is Chris from DraftDashboard.com. Here are my fantasy football starts and sits for NFL Week 2. Before I get started, please drop a like on this video and hit that red subscribe button and hit that bell icon so you don't miss our new videos. In this video, I'm going to go over each position and give you my fantasy football starts and sits for NFL this week. This should help you decide who you want to start in your season long fantasy football leagues. And we will show you how to use the draft dashboard tools to dominate your season long fantasy leagues. You can find waiver wire targets, get player point projections, find the best positional matchups. We also post a cheat sheet with the top 10 fantasy football players to start for each position and we have the best and worst wide receiver cornerback matchups posted as well. We have it all right here, so let's get into it. Okay guys, let's take a look at my fantasy football starts and sits for NFL week two. At the quarterback position, I'm gonna start Baker Mayfield from the Cleveland Browns playing the Houston Texans, who have the second worst defense overall and they give up the fifth most fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks. Baker Mayfield scored 17 fantasy points in week one. He got one rush attempt. He's projected at 18.5 fantasy points here in week two. He's 6,000 DraftKings salary, 1,100 more on FanDuel. And Vegas thinks there's gonna be 48 points scored in this game. And they have the Cleveland Browns favored by 11 and a half. So this is a fantastic matchup for Baker Mayfield. I think the Cleveland Browns are gonna run all over the Houston Texans. Baker Mayfield should be able to rack up those fantasy points. So I like Baker Mayfield here versus the Houston Texans. Okay, the other quarterback that I'm gonna start this week is Joe Burrow from the Cincinnati Bengals playing the Chicago Bears, who have the seventh worst defense overall and they're middle of the pack defending opposing quarterbacks. Joe Burrow scored 19 fantasy points in week one. He also got one rush attempt. He's projected at 18.4 fantasy points here in week two. He's 5,800 DraftKings salary, 1,300 more on FanDuel. Vegas thinks there's going to be 45.5 points scored in this game with the Bengals trailing by three and a half. So Joe Burrow is a good looking quarterback. He's got plenty of weapons at the wide receiver position and a running back that can open up the pass. So I like Joe Burrow here versus the Chicago Bears. Okay, who are we going to sit at the quarterback position? I'm going to sit Matt Ryan from the Atlanta Falcons playing the Tampa Bay Bucks, who have a good defense overall and they're middle of the pack defending opposing quarterbacks. Matt Ryan only scored seven fantasy points in week one. He had two rush attempts. Now he is projected at 19.5 fantasy points here in week two, but I'm not sure if he's gonna score over 15 fantasy points in this one. He's got a tough matchup. He's 5,600 DraftKings salary and 1,100 more on FanDuel. Vegas thinks there's going to be 52.5 points scored in this game, and they have the Atlanta Falcons trailing by 12 and a half. Now, the one thing that Matt Ryan does have going for him in this game is it's probably going to be a passing game script as the Atlanta Falcons fall behind, so we might have an opportunity to rack up those fantasy points but I'm not gonna trust Matt Ryan in week two. I wanna see more from this guy, see if he can put in a good fantasy game and play him when he has a better matchup. So I'm gonna sit Matt Ryan here versus the Tampa Bay Bucks. Okay, let's take a look at the running back position. I'm gonna start Melvin Gordon from the Denver Broncos playing the Jacksonville Jaguars who have the second worst defense overall, and they give up the third most fantasy points to opposing running backs. Melvin Gordon scored 24 fantasy points in week one off of 11 rush attempts and three pass targets. 
Now, I would like to see more volume for Melvin Gordon, but he's got a fantastic matchup this week. Now, he's projected at 11.4 fantasy points here in week two, but I think he can score 15 fantasy points or more in this one. He's 5,900 DraftKings salary and the same price on FanDuel. Vegas thinks there's going to be 44 points scored in this game with the Broncos favored by five and a half. So Jerry Judy from the Broncos is out. I think they're going to rely on Melvin Gordon to carry the ball and it could be a running game script if the Denver Broncos get ahead of the Jaguars. I think you play him in this matchup here. So I'm going to start Melvin Gordon here versus the Jacksonville Jaguars. Another running back I'm going to start is Chase Edmonds from the Arizona Cardinals playing the Minnesota Vikings, who have the fifth worst defense overall, and they give up the six most fantasy points to opposing running backs. Chase Edmonds scored 15 fantasy points in week one off of 12 rush attempts and four pass targets. He's projected at 12.4 fantasy points here in week two. He's 4,900 DraftKings salary and 1,100 more on FanDuel. Vegas thinks there's going to be 50.5 points scored in this game with the Cardinals favored by four and a half. So I like the matchup. It's going to be a fast paced game. Could be a high scoring game. Plenty of opportunity to get those fantasy points. And if the Cardinals take the lead in this one, Chase Edmonds should get plenty of work. So I'm going to start Chase Edmonds here versus the Minnesota Vikings. Okay, who are we going to sit in week two at the running back position? I'm going to sit Mike Davis from the Atlanta Falcons playing the Tampa Bay Bucks, who have a good defense overall, and they give up the second fewest fantasy points to opposing running backs. Mike Davis, he scored 10 fantasy points in week one off of 15 rush attempts and six pass targets. So he had plenty of volume, just couldn't get anything done. Now he is projected at 14.4 fantasy points here in week two, but I think he's gonna struggle to score over 10 fantasy points here. It's a bad matchup and a bad game script. He's 5,500 DraftKings salary and the same price on FanDuel. Vegas thinks there's gonna be 52.5 points scored in this game with the Atlanta Falcons trailing by 12 and a half. So Matt Ryan might have to throw the ball, abandon the run against a great defense. So I'm gonna sit Mike Davis here versus the Tampa Bay Bucks. Real quick guys, I got great news. For a limited time, we're offering a full 30 day trial to Draft Dashboard. You can try all the tools for NFL, MLB is still going, NBA is right around the corner. This is a great time to get in and try everything for one month. The tools are all about saving research time. You can see the last three games, the fantasy points per game, the targets they got per game, so you can see how involved they are in the offense, the rushes they got per game. Seeing all this stuff on one screen helps you save time and make better picks. Oh, and if you're tired of doing research every day, we just added a cheat sheet that shows hand-picked plays for the slate. No confusing stat lines, no headaches, just a simple cheat sheet that shows the absolute best players for your lineups. Okay, let's take a look at the wide receiver position. I'm going to start Debo Samuel from the San Francisco 49ers playing the Philadelphia Eagles who have a middle of the pack defense overall, and they give up the seventh most fantasy points to opposing wide receivers. Debo Samuel scored 36 fantasy points in week one off of 12 pass targets. He was on the field for 84% of the snaps, projected at 14 fantasy points here in week two. He's 6,700 DraftKings salary and 200 more on FanDuel. Vegas thinks there's going to be 48.5 points scored in this game with the San Francisco 49ers favored by three and a half. So with Raheem Mostert out, look for Debo Samuel to get a ton of work in a great matchup. So I'm going to start Debo Samuel here versus the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm also going to start Mike Williams from the LA Chargers playing the Dallas Cowboys 
who have the eighth worst defense overall, and they give up the second most fantasy points to opposing wide receivers. Mike Williams scored 22 fantasy points off of 12 pass targets in week one. He was on the field for 75% of the snaps, projected at 11.4 fantasy points here in week two. He's 6,100 DraftKings salary and 500 less on FanDuel. Vegas thinks there's going to be 51.5 points scored in this game with the Chargers favored by two and a half. So he got a ton of pass targets. He's got a great matchup in a high scoring game that should be close and competitive. So I'm going to start Mike Williams here versus the Dallas Cowboys. I'm also going to start Antonio Brown from the Tampa Bay Bucks playing the Atlanta Falcons who have the third worst defense overall and they give up the absolute most fantasy points to opposing wide receivers. Antonio Brown scored 27 fantasy points off of seven pass targets and one rush attempt in week one. He's projected at 13.1 fantasy points here in week two. He's 6,000 DraftKings salary and 400 more on FanDuel. Vegas thinks there's going to be 52.5 points scored in this game with the Bucks favored by 12 and a half. So it looks like Tom Brady and Antonio Brown looks like they've got things figured out. I think he's going to have a breakout season here with Tom Brady. It's a fantastic matchup versus the Falcons in a high scoring game. So I'm going to start Antonio Brown here versus the Atlanta Falcons. Okay, who are we going to sit at the wide receiver position in week two? I'm going to sit Michael Pittman Jr. from the Indianapolis Colts playing the LA Rams, who have the best defense overall, and they give up the absolute fewest fantasy points to opposing wide receivers. Michael Pittman Jr. only scored six fantasy points off of four pass targets in week one, now, he was on the field for 97% of the snaps. We had high hopes for Michael Pittman Jr. in week one, but he did not deliver. Now he's got a super tough matchup in week two. So he's projected at 12 fantasy points, but I think that projection is a little bit high. I don't see him getting over eight fantasy points in this one. He's 4,300 DraftKings salary and 900 more on FanDuel. Vegas thinks there's going to be 47.5 points scored in this game with the Colts trailing by four. So I'm going to avoid this bad matchup and find a better wide receiver to start. So I'm going to sit Michael Pittman Jr. here versus the LA Rams. Okay, moving on to the tight end position. I'm going to start Janu Smith from the New England Patriots playing the New York Jets who have the fourth worst defense overall, and they give up the absolute most fantasy points to opposing tight ends. Janu Smith scored 10 fantasy points off of five pass targets and one rush attempt in week one. He was on the field for 73% of the snaps, projected at 8.8 .8 fantasy points here in week two. He's 4,500 DraftKings salary and 800 more on FanDuel. Vegas thinks there's going to be 42.5 points scored in this game with the Patriots favored by four. So I think Janu Smith is going to be a big part of this New England Patriots offense. He's got a fantastic matchup. So I'm going to start Janu Smith here versus the New York Jets. I'm also going to start Noah Font from the Denver Broncos playing the Jacksonville Jaguars who have the second worst defense overall and they give up the third most fantasy points to opposing tight ends. Noah Fant scored 12 fantasy points in week one off of eight pass targets. He was on the field for 77% of the snaps, projected at 10.9 fantasy points here in week two. He's 4,200 DraftKings salary and 1,500 more on FanDuel. Vegas thinks there's gonna be 44 points scored in this game with the Broncos favored by five and a half. So this is another tight end that I think is gonna be a big part of the Denver Broncos offense this year. 
I liked that he got eight pass targets in week one. It was on the field for most of the snaps. And he's got a fantastic matchup here in week two. So I'm going to start Noah Font here versus the Jacksonville Jaguars. Okay, who are we going to sit at the tight end position? I'm going to sit Mike Jacecki from the Miami Dolphins playing the Buffalo Bills, who have a middle-of-the-pack defense overall, and they do give up the seventh most fantasy points to opposing tight ends. But Mike Jacecki scored zero fantasy points off of only two pass targets in week one, and he was only on the field for 39% of the snaps, so that's a problem. He's projected at 9.9 .9 fantasy points here in week two, but I don't see how he's gonna get there when he's only on the field for 39% of the snaps. So I could see him scoring five fantasy points or less in this one. He's 4,000 DraftKings salary and 1,300 more on FanDuel. Vegas thinks there's gonna be 48 points scored in this game and they have the Dolphins trailing by three and a half. So despite the good matchup here, he just wasn't out there enough for me to trust him. So I'm going to sit Mike Jacecki here versus the Buffalo Bills. If you want to try all these daily fantasy tools for yourself, click the link in the description below this video or just go to draftdashboard.com. You can use our DFS lineup optimizer to build quality lineups using our picks and your own custom player pool. Click the link in the description below this video and try all these daily fantasy tools right now. Thanks so much for watching. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit that bell icon so you can get instant updates whenever we post a new video. Thank you so much for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this video, please smickety smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Oh, and please comment below with your favorite play for this NFL slate. I love to hear what you guys have to think. Thanks again and good luck.